Welcome to the Healthy OC segment on Real Orange. I'm medical author Dr. Doug Lyle. Strokes are a common cause of death and disability, but are all strokes the same? Are some more related to the heart than the brain? To discuss this important issue and to share some of his newer research, my guest today is Dr. C.K. Kirsten, Director of Electrophysiology and Arrhythmia Services at UCI. C.K., welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Very pleased to be here. Well, good to have you here. Uh, are all strokes the same? <laughs> very important question, and they are not. Um, you can classify them based on whether they are occurring for the first time or whether they are occurring in a recurrent fashion. Of the 780,000 strokes that occur a, a, every year in the United States, approximately 600,000 of those are occurring for the first time. And about 200,000 are occurring in a recurrent fashion. It's also possible to think of them in terms of the mechanism that produces the stroke. About 85 to 90 percent of the strokes are called ischemic strokes, which means that they occur because of an interruption of the blood supply, generally because of a blood clot that clogs the blood vessel. 10 to 15 percent of them are called hemorrhagic strokes, which means the blood vessel in the brain uh, bursts open. The ischemic strokes, which constitute 85 to 90 percent of all the strokes, uh, are also further classified as thrombotic, which means the blood clot occurs locally in the blood vessel, or embolic. And embolic means it can come from one of the larger blood vessels like the carotid arteries or the aorta, or it can come from the heart. If it comes from the heart, it's called cardioembolic. Um, this is about a bird's eye view of how strokes are classified. And 25 to 40 percent of the time, despite a very thorough investigation, we are unable to tell why the stroke occurred, and we call them cryptogenic. Meaning unknown and unable to find. That's right, and it can occur in young patients, and it can be a source of frustration to the physician treating the patient, and because the mechanism is unknown, it also prevents us from delivering effective therapies. And um, <clears throat> to prevent stroke recurrences, 180,000 strokes a year are recurrent strokes. If these are occurring because of an embolism, we need to know the source where the blood clot comes from. Now, you have some new and interesting information that kind of cast a different light on the old dogmas as to where these strokes generated. That's correct. In this country, um, cardioembolic strokes are thought to arise for the most part from the structure called the left atrial appendage. The appendage is this dog ear like structure that is attached to the left atrium and in atrial fibrillation if you get a stroke it is thought to be because of a blood clot that came from the left atrial appendage. And broke off and then traveled to the brain. That's correct. But you have evidence that it may come from another location. That's right. Um, we actually recently published some work on this. We found that there is a pouch present in the septum, the curtain that separates the right upper chamber from the left upper chamber, and it looks like a kangaroo's pouch. So we call that the left atrial septal pouch, and it is present approximately 30 percent of the time. So the septal pouch. This is the left atrium and the septal pouch would be located over here. Very good. Uh, well, as a cardiologist, I'm interested in where this research is going and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. CK, thanks. Thank you. If very you much or someone you know has suffered a stroke, see your physician and discuss the possibility that it could be related to heart disease so it can be properly evaluated and perhaps future strokes can be prevented. That wraps up this edition of the Healthy OC. Please join us next time.